As someone who has only used Windows before, jumping to macOS was quite a big readjustment. But with the major updates that have finally made its way to the MacBook Pro 13, I decided to give it a go. So having used the MacBook Pro 14 as my secondary laptop for the past six months, here are six things that I discovered and would like to share. The first thing that most people will notice is just how clean and minimalistic the MacBook Pro design is. You just know that this design will look fresh even in five years time, which can't be said about many laptops on the market. Every fitment of every panel is perfect, and the machining on the aluminium body is virtually flawless. The bezels are pretty much non-existent, and I even had someone comment on how slim they are in person. The next thing that impressed me about the new M1 Pro is of course its performance. My workflow mainly consists of video editing inside of Premiere Pro, and sometimes 3D animation work inside of Blender. My projects inside Premiere Pro, although are only 1080p 60fps, are quite complicated with up to 10 video tracks and many nested sequences. The M1 Pro was able to run with minimal drop frames in preview, but more importantly, render my usual projects faster than my G14, which has an RTX 2016 Max-Q. Onto Blender, it recently started supporting Apple's Metal API, which allows it to take advantage of the GPU. It's still not quite as fast as using optics with NVIDIA chips, but it is quite a substantial improvement compared to running on the CPU. Either way, I expect Metal support to continue to get better, so if you're someone who uses Blender a lot and needs macOS for other reasons, the M1 MacBook Pros shouldn't be a problem for your work. The final thing that amazed me was that peak performance isn't hindered when you're not charging. That's a big problem with Windows laptops, as you either get significant battery drain or the system throttles to a point that makes your entire workflow super painful. However, with the M1 Pro, the performance is consistent whether or not you're plugged in, and I think that's a massive advantage over its Windows competitors. The next thing that really impressed me about these new MacBook Pros was not just how fast they are, but how quiet they are while being fast. No matter if it's rendering inside Premiere Pro or Blender, the entire laptop is pretty much dead silent. No Windows laptop I've ever had the chance to try even comes close in terms of noise output under such loads. Although macOS seems very refined, there are still a few oddities to get used to and a few things that are simply just annoying. Take for example auto boot every time you open the lid, a feature that currently you can't disable on the M1 Pro, or when you have to hold an additional key just to have instant shutdown or restart, or even the fact that you need to move the emoji panel to prevent it disappearing when trying to input multiple emojis. One of the biggest issues I've noticed with the MacBook is when using it with a Bluetooth mouse. The cursor movement is very laggy and makes the whole system feel slow, even when connected to a high refresh external monitor. I have stumbled across an app called Linear Mouse, which helps alleviate the issues slightly, but it's still noticeably choppier than using the same mouse over on Windows or when using the built-in touchpad. If you also encounter the same problems, I'd recommend giving Linear Mouse a go. You can find a link for that in the description. If you're planning on using your MacBook Pro 14 with a high refresh monitor that's also high resolution, then you're probably not going to enjoy the full refresh capabilities of that monitor. I often use my MacBook with the Samsung G9, which supports 240Hz refresh. However, I'm only able to experience 120Hz at G9's native resolution. So to sum up, the new MacBook Pro 14s are wonderful work-oriented machines. They are powerful, stylish, and most importantly, quiet, which is what you want from a laptop that assists with your creative work anywhere you take it. It's got great battery life, plus the added benefit of no throttling when working away from the outlets. And when you want to relax and just watch some Netflix, for example, the speakers are so good that you don't really crave for a better audio experience. So if your workflow can take advantage of apps that work great natively in macOS, then I really can't recommend the MacBook Pro 14 to you enough. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.